Uh, the question that I wanted to put towards the audience is how much security <laughs> is enough? So one of the problems that we see is quite often when I work with CIOs and they come to you and say, I need a security strategy. And the question is, you know, you can never have too much security and you can waste. My instant reaction is, how much money can you waste? What I say to the CIO is this. If you look at all of the breaches that occurred in the last five to ten years, there are no penalties. None. There are no legal penalties. There are no financial penalties. And there are no social penalties to being breached and having data stolen. Look at all the companies that got nicked. Right. Heartland Systems. Target. Um, you know, the list goes on and on and on. The, guy, the head of the company called LifeLock, who's going to guarantee the security of your systems, published his social security number and promptly got owned every si which way. That company's still in business today. All across the spectrum, there is no downside to having poor quality IT security. Right? So that's, that's the patent reality when you research it. So the, the question is, how much security do you design into a system and, and what do you do when actually security doesn't matter. So Greg, are you saying there's no financial downturn for Target <coughs> or for LifeLock? Or who's well, just, there, yeah, you know, I was questioning that. By, <laughs> there was the certainly. And Target's still in litigation. They're, they're gonna have to pay back Visa. Okay. And so let me give you the counter argument. So if you think about Target, they underinvested in IT security for 10 years, probably at around about a rate of 100 to 150 million a year. So let's say that they saved uh, uh, 1.5 billion over a 10 year period, not adjusted for an NPV. Mm -hmm. um, you should be giving the CEO a bonus right. for the say making that much money so you're by saying, under investing. You're saying they spent less in the long term by not yeah. investing in security. Yeah, yeah it's an exaggeration to say that there's no penalty. Right, right. That's right. But I absolutely agree with you. It is frustrating. It is beyond frustrating to see these companies get breached and breached and breached mm -hmm. and have only a small penalty. I can't tell you how annoying it is to think, mm -hmm. I mean, how much free credit monitoring do we all have because our cards have been owned? It's useless. And, is it, and that's useless. It's worthless. Yep. And the companies don't pay equivalent to the, the, the problems that their lack of security have caused. And in most of those cases, even worse, in most of those cases, the security breaches were so simple and basic and obvious that it's not even yes. a question of advanced security versus mm -hmm. less advanced security. It's a question of any security. Yes. So, it, you know, those, none of those companies have suffered a penalty. So what's your attitude to security? What are you doing? I mean, this is your belly. Uh, are we talking specifically about breaches, by the way, here, just to scope it? Any security. Yeah. Okay, because breaches are a very specific beast, mm -hmm. right, as opposed to, you know, let's say DDoS or, you know, people taking down your e-commerce site, where th well, there is an implied an lack of example. business. One of the Chinese generals, who's uh, now a wealthy capitalist in China, just bought Tinder, which is the gay dating app. That is the ultimate information source that for um, corrupting individuals by knowing if they're gay, right? If you work in the American government or you're a spy and you're on Tinder, I'm now an ability to uh, potentially negatively uh, Side note life. here, Tinder is not the gay dating app. Uh, but anyway, go ahead. <laughs> okay, well, what's the other one? That Grindr. 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 Grindr, yeah. <laughs> See, there you go. I don't know. Oh, you knew what it was called. <laughs> nice cover there, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wanted to correct him. <laughs> hey, I'll, I'll do it. And you know what, Greg? <laughs> Your wife should be very happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he sure is. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess you know, there's, so, yeah. there, there's two sides of it, right? When you talk about these companies don't have a penalty, I think that the person, the people that where the penalty comes is in the IT groups, the people who they deem it to be their fault. They've got to deal with all the flack from it, while the company as a whole, like you said, it, they're they're not losing much money at all. The company's fine, but. I think you look at it from the aspect of, do we have enough security that our systems are going to be protected to the point where we can keep making money, mm -hmm. right? Our e-commerce apps. That's called uptime. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. And then there's the other point where we have certain data that we have to protect and we need security for that. And if it's breached, there's not a big enough penalty, so who really cares? Yeah. But, but I would suggest what is really the penalties we don't see often. Yeah, People mm -hmm. will maybe lose their job 
for example, the RSA uh, thing where they broke into a big uh, company that <coughs> produces aircraft, yeah? Mm -hmm. Don't will mention the name. Somebody has that data and profits from that. It's espionage, yeah? Mm -hmm. So the penalty isn't it direct. Maybe the cause on the... On the um, uh, so industrial espionage, theft yeah, of information. They of don't have to lose money directly, but indirectly, a competitor have now that information. It's so, not penalty, it's pain. It's pain, yeah. And, but and it's you not, only have as much security as you can tolerate pain. Yes. Yeah, and on the other side, for example, you have a breach in the government sector, yeah? Somebody will lose their jobs, yeah? Probably maybe, not. maybe a politician <laughs> cannot be... Uh, is, People lose their uh, jobs every day. That's not exactly a big deal. So if you only take the case for money, maybe, yeah, <laughs> the stock exchange don't uh, see any impact if you have a security breach. My but in the long is, term, so the people So the people who have, a, have a, a, a dog in this hunt are the security professionals who do, of course, inflate their sense of importance by running around overblowing the security situation, in my opinion. I've not met a security professional that's reasonable and practical. And there's the but unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> riding it around. Look, see, that's right now. Just going to scoot over for a little bit. <laughs> uh, let me throw another question out here. Why are we as infrastructure engineers having this conversation? This is not our problem to solve, by and large. This is an application problem. This is an OS problem. This is a development problem. Problem. It's everybody's problem. Uh, yeah. I, I'm, uh, I'm going to argue that the reason why we have the problem is because of that mentality. Because security, security, security is across me, every side. Okay, I'm not saying we aren't responsible for security. I'm saying we've spent <coughs> bloody enough money and put enough systems in place down here to try to safeguard communications. And there's still SQL injection hacks that can't be stopped until the bloody developers start writing code. And yeah, sanity checking input, that. et cetera, that is where much of the hacking so often comes in. It's not because someone left a pinhole open in a firewall rule set. The, we can't fix the problem in this room by ourselves. We can't. We, the, we the, can't. The, the key thing to, to consider there is, and I think you're right um, to a degree, uh, there's, uh, there's a few things that we should probably think about. And, and the big thing is, is um, if you think about what DevOps brings to the table, and I mean, I don't mean automation, I mean actual DevOps, and, and that is the feedback loop between development shops and operations. Mm. These large development shops don't usually know that they're doing these things because they're not, provide, they're not being provided with that feedback. And so it, 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 it is on us to say, uh, you know, we're not going to band-aid this for you by buying a huge firewall, for instance. Let's talk about what we can do to solve the problem at the source. And that doesn't make you a software developer. That just makes you... <coughs> Uh, taking accountability for that your piece of the problem by going back to development and saying this is something that we need to fix, instead of instead of just putting a device in front of in front of the problem, that feedback loop is important. So so let's go back to Stephen's point. You know there needs to be penalties in place because I'll also say yes I agree with everything you just said. Yeah. But operationally speaking that is difficult to make happen. Take for example a web application firewall. As soon as you put that sucker in place and start trying to sanitize input, all hell breaks loose because you're not putting good input through the application anymore. Right. And it's impacting the business. You're going to shut that thing down because we're losing money. Right. Yeah. And. Okay, so now Steven says, shouldn't there be some sort of severe penalties when companies get breached because they make the insecure decision and you know, sacrifice uh, a security on the altar of money? Mm -hmm. So what do we do about that? Is that a legislation yeah. thing? Uh, is, do we have to penalize I do companies? strongly believe that that's the source of the problem. I think mm -hmm. that, that, we, mm -hmm. that, the, that the beginning of the problem is a non-technical one. I, I absolutely agree with you, and, but my problem is ha has been for many, many years is that security professionals overblow themselves with a sense of self-importance and they get all, you know, intrusion detection systems, four layers of firewalls, proxy servers, and it's a bit like um, on your house you've decided that your door isn't very secure so you go and buy a $5,000 armoured door and mount it in a, in a special frame in your building mm -hmm. and your window right next to it hasn't been fixed. Yeah. You, you, what we need is a balanced, reasonable approach of you know, if you're going to say, my, I have a mission critical system and the security needs to be ironclad, you need to fix all of it and it needs to be a coherent, you know, investment across the board. So 
if I'm working with a CIO, I say to him, look, forget security, it's the last thing you need to think about because there's actually no penalties to losing it. But what you do need is a, a PR consultant to write you a media strategy so that when you get breached, <laughs> you're, in, you're, you know, good stuff. You can spin it. Right? Right, right? And then you invest on a security strategy to the point where you, say, you can then stand up in front of the, of the judge and say, yes, we had a perfectly fine security strategy that was, you know, met the minimum guidelines across the board. That's all you need. And, uh, and that's what the industry needs to do. We need to stop futzing around with IPSs that we never enable or never use because they're too complex and hard to, we buy them, but we never use them. One of the interesting things there is, is we're talking about all these attacks that are coming in from the outside. A lot of the attacks these days are spear phishing. Oh. Okay, it's an email that somebody's gotten and it's social engineering and a large majority of the breaches these days is done by a social engineering. A it's not the target. A firewall cluster won't solve any of those problems. It will not. No. Or a stolen laptop. Yeah. Exactly. You know, it, and that's the point is that you don't want to armor the door, the front door, and then... You can't get out. Open. <laughs> well, then have someone let you come in behind them. Right? That's right, yeah. <laughs> that's, and that's my point about security is... I guess ultimately is that we need to stop overdoing security at the network layer and start focusing on the application layer. If we could get rid of the people. Yeah. I think there's an awareness though of those Automation. those <laughs> other attack vectors that we're talking about, you know, from from inside your network, from the, you know, uh, when I, the, how, how many how many hours a, a day do 10th graders in study halls have to just sit there and hack away at the the servers <laughs> down at the high school or something? I mean, that's your, one of your biggest attack vectors. And I, I think that there's a, a growing awareness of that, though. So, you know, yeah, we, we're kind of focused on edge security, you know, and who, who can get through my firewall. And if you can, I sort of deserve it because I left it open. I mean, that's, 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 uh, not, that's not a problem of technology. It's a problem of, of management and thinking through the, the solution. Um, but I, I really think that there is kind of an awareness, maybe because of Target and was Bank of America one of them? They've all been. There were too many. Yeah. They were, so, okay. so how many companies went out after Target and decided to spend six figures on IT security on the latest whatever, next-gen firewall, any spyware, malware, just to check the box to say they had yeah. did, spent the six figures and yep. they felt comfy going to bed at night? I feel like the solution, frankly, is a legislative solution. Yeah. I feel like they should increase the pain on these companies, the penalties in dollars, the, the, the penalties in lost business, something increase the pain for these breaches. And if you can ratchet up the pain for these companies, maybe they will start doing something about it. So you know? in, in healthcare, there's actually significant penalties in healthcare. Absolutely. So HIPAA violations, there is a list published, I forget where it is, mm. online. You can go see whose healthcare, you know, if you release, if you lost a laptop or records on it, there is some charge of like $1,000, $2,000 per record. There are some astronomical fines of millions of dollars to healthcare organizations. PCI so SOX regs, PCI regs, there's nothing really that matches that. The five, in, there's in no retail. legal. The PCI regs are a fine levied by the contract yeah. holder. Yeah. The five yeah. credit card issuers will levy you a financial yeah. fine if you, if you lose yeah. credit card data. Right. But there's no legal so, ramifications. Yeah, so there's not a lot of, right, my point, there's not a lot of teeth in PCI. And the right? fine from the PCI companies isn't actually all that steep. Right. right. Yeah? Right. But yeah. it's and important to realize what happened with the target breach. We got uh, chip cards in the United States. Oh, <laughs> that's the result of the target breach. Not really. We yeah. went halfway. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You didn't, exactly. Chip. I didn't say chip and pin. <laughs> we went halfway. Yes. yes. And the difference between, let's say, security that is only a checkbox and real security. Yeah, I would also agree that the most uh, hacks were done on layer eight. Yeah, on the human layer. How many companies train their employees with uh, training about social engineering and these attack vectors, yeah? So I think a lot of people are not aware, yeah? No, there, there are companies, and I was reading about this topic recently, and there are companies that do regular training, and there's some pretty substantial organizations, and they find that there are still about 2% of the people still click on the email, mm -hmm. even after multiple training episodes. No, I don't, I don't know if this is accurate <laughs> or not, but I read a, an article, uh, not even less than a year ago, about how SMBs are really one of the, the greatest targets uh, for, you know, that's, that's mm -hmm. because they're not concerned about these things. They're not thinking about that. So some, uh, uh, some law firm with, you know, 20 lawyers and 30 support staff, they're the prime mm -hmm. target. Um, so I, it, it's a cultural thing. What are the penalties for me as an employee if I screw up? 
I guess, mm -hmm. get fired. I think that's HR. I, I think that's one of the counter arguments. This whole you know legal punitive argument. While I don't completely disagree with it. We sit around this table and say that people are the weakest link and that even if you have a completely secure infrastructure, you've done absolutely everything correct, um, you know, someone does a spear phishing attack that has elevated privileges because it's part of their job and makes a mistake and all of a sudden now you have a breach, are, are we really going to penalize a company because in, a single individual did something wrong and penalize them heavily when the reality is that is that is the predominant way people are getting into networks right now. I mean, mm -hmm. there's people out there who are hacking away at known vulnerabilities, but that is not the that's not the main way people are getting into getting these massive breaches. So is the point of investing in security equipment to kind of take that to a, another level? The reason to have lots of security stuff is so that when you are breached inevitably, even though arguably there's no financial penalty to it, um, so that you can say, well, we tried. And then everyone goes, oh, that's okay then. I mean, I mean, really, this, you know, Target was a great example because um, a month and a half, okay, so the day Target got hacked, their, sh their share price dropped like 46%. Six weeks later, they had their best day ever on the stock price. <coughs> so it clearly didn't screw up the investors very much. But if you're a company where trust and privacy is something that's very important, that might be healthcare data, that the you know, lawyers and the like might be something else where they may be privileged, have privileged information, if that stuff gets leaked out, at least you can say, well, look, we had six layers of stuff and they still got through. We tried our best and maybe people still trust you. If you turn around and go, yeah, we didn't buy a firewall. How, how many, do you lose in reputational damage rather than financial? Do people say, well, I'm not giving my business to these people anymore. And yeah, you, your loss is that you stop getting business. Or do we have short memories because we've all got ADD these days. And yeah, I guess we, we do have short memories because I yeah. myself said everyone's been hacked. So I guess there is no reputational damage to being hacked if I think everybody's been hacked. What? Especially if you've invested in a PR consultant to handle the media backlash. <laughs> <laughs> but, so is that your summary, that, Greg? That, that's Greg's solution. <laughs> What's it, what is it from a consumer's point, though? Target has a big breach. Our credit card numbers are out there. And uh, what happens? We get a new credit card. We get credit monitoring. And we don't care. We go shop at Target next week. My point exactly. I don't think it, I, mean, I think credit cards, while they, they seem to make the news, are probably not the best example of, uh, of an impactful breach for that yeah. very reason. is because yeah. Yeah. I've had my card stolen multiple times, and including Target, I had, it, I had it ripped off twice in two weeks. I had to replace my card just after I did all my you know, and, and auto bills <laughs> and all that. It got ripped off again. The best thing about but, credit card yeah. hacks is that you're not responsible. Yeah. Yeah. But when you it's, talk, it's like it doesn't really matter. But when you talk about things like PHI, or you start talking about you know this personal identifying information when it comes to your social security number, even though you're not supposed to use that for identification, we do all over the place, mm -hmm. right? And and then you have identity theft. Those things become much much harder. So I mean, think th those are really the hacks that I'm concerned about because the credit card, there's a there's a there's a system in place to kind of <coughs> mitigate that, and that's why we're not all upset at Target, is because you know I didn't feel any pain with the exception of having to go through and update my credit card yep. payment on some stuff. That was the, ex the sure. extent of it. So now when you go and sit in front of your CIO, he says, give me an example of what happens if I don't do this. Yep. And there's nothing in the public. No. Yep. Except for these credit card breaches. So I agree with you. There are use cases where, but you can't prove anything. And that's where security professionals come in and overblow it, right? And then make a big deal out of nothing. And as a networking always gets the wrong end of that stick. You but know, if, if your company, uh, let's say, has some intellectual property and it must be uh, kept secure, yeah, that is sh really important for you, yeah? No? Industry moves on. Right? You've only got a technology advantage for a few years before it's gone. Look at Sony, right? Mm. Look at Sony. They got all downloaded and published and not much. All right. Yeah, I, th I, think, we've, I think we've reached the end of this one. Yeah. This yes. one. Um, yep. There's no answer to this. It's a rhetorical yeah. debate. <laughs> Good luck with working it out. I was just going to ask, Greg, so what is it, how much security is enough? <laughs> so I would say exactly the same amount. For most companies, 95 to 98% of companies, do exactly what you would do in your house when you leave it. You lock the door, you check the windows are closed, that there's latches on the windows, that, you know, and so on and mm -hmm. so forth. And that's enough. And then have a PR strategy ready to go. So if something happens, you can stand up in front of the press and say, we took appropriate security mm -hmm. result, you know, 
methods according to the usual standards. Our computer experts were taking all best practices into consideration. We're very, very sorry. So not to drag this out, but the, you can buy insurance now, right? You can buy insurance, breach insurance. Yeah. <laughs> so companies are going, I'm buying breach insurance. That's, a, so that's if awesome. I get, I Still get, cheaper yeah. than security. Yeah. Yeah. IT well, security, right? Yeah. Isn't that a problem? Right. Breach insurance. Okay. Thank you.